the word yes um first john chapter 3 verses 1 and uh, today i'm going to talk to us about who we are i am ahava hallelujah clap for that one i am what why ahava as a name of the ministry why ahava because i believe it's very important for us to understand that okay glory to god i think we're going to be blessed okay now first john chapter 3 verse 1 okay somebody say i am ahava Philly, come on, say it with you. Know, I am Ahava. I am Ahava. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll ask us to say after the service. Maybe you'll, <laughs> you'll have gotten the revelation. I am what? Uh-huh. You see, we talked about last 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 week. We said that uh, the year 2024 is a year of what? Huh? 2024 is a what? It's the year of priesthood, right? Yes. Okay. Kaf Daleth. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Kaf. Daleth, okay, that symbol that opens the door into what priesthood, and we say that uh, when David was defining the priesthood in First Corinthians 24, First Chronicles 24, he divided it into 16 and 8, okay, and we said 16 is speaks of what love, and 8 speaks of what the new beginning. So if we say that Kaf Daleth here cannot be understood from the context can only from that context of a new beginning of spiritual birth okay and what and love as the foundation of its character until love has to be the foundation of your birth which we say in our it's effortless birth if you are birthing something is love the foundation is love the foundation when you're going to start up a business, is love the foundation? Glory to God. So I felt like it is important for me to open your eyes to what? To love, the revelation of the love of God. Because that's, that's what helps us to produce effortlessly. Hallelujah. So let's talk about love today. Then, tomorrow, then next week we shall go back to our golden chain. Just and then a glorified life. Hallelujah. So you get it. Love has to be the foundation of our effortless but I don't care what you're going to produce. If it has no love, it will fail. Because love never fails. So I want to build something on a foundation that never fails. Hallelujah. Plan has to build a marriage on the foundation of love that never fails. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Amen. And those who are getting married, those who are going to start ministries, those who are going to lead ministries here, those who are going to stand on the pulpit here, love has to be the foundation. Somebody say love. First John chapter 3, verses 1, the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Oh, what manner of love the, God, the Father has given us that we might be called his children. Let's start from there. This love of God, what manner of love that God has given us that you might be called. The very fact that you are a child of God shows that you are loved already by God. How can I know that I'm loved by God? I am called his child. Now, if you do not know that you are a child of God, that means you have no revelation of the love of the Father. If Ahava comes there and has no the revelation of the parents, again, I just sang that some issues the God, he will find a good dude out there and say, Baby, I love you. Akonechi. Again, have you have you have you had ladies somebody tell them I love you? And they say, I know it. Those they know who they are. They are loved. There was Sanga a, a, a lady who has never been loved at home by a father. These women were ready. And we men sometimes can sense that Susan is desperate for love. 
because they never love of that. Now that's very important, by the way. That's very important. That's very important. You you are having daughters. Uh, do those daughters have a revelation of the father? The father, but I'm talking about the father, not the mother. The father. And that's why it's important for some of us that we will, when, when, we, when we talk about the love of God, it's hard for us to comprehend the love of God because our relationship with our fathers, some people, eh? huh? go. So they can't understand when you say, God loves you. Very important for us men here. So, but the message version says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called children of God. That's who we really are. Identity. You are a child of God. When you're walking, you are a child of God. When you are walking, you are a child of God. That must be your identity 24-7. Hallelujah. You are a child of of God. My father is broke. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I bet I'm building something. If you know who your father is, if you know who you are, that I am, but oh, but this someone also, uh, like I keep telling you guys, this one, eh? once you understand the revelation of that, I never found children who who know that their father loves them. You just see the way they play with their father. Just see the way they are free. Someone can even they can even stand here and they what? Because they know that the father will come out. They are free. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know who you are? You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. Then he says, but that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously because it has no idea who he is and what he's up to. Hallelujah. So we must understand who we are. Listen to me. We are your identity, your identity, your identity. You are a child of God. Amen. This is enough. Can a child of God fail? Can a child of God lack what to eat? Healing is the children's bread. Provision is the children's bread. How can you come home with a home to a father who loves you and doesn't provide for you? Have you seen these guys who sell tomatoes? Are taking their children to school? <laughs> Yesterday I was I was somewhere and under to withdraw some money and I was next to some home and there was this guy here with these chicks. Then I think something was flying up. It, it had moved. The mom had moved a little bit in front. They were here next to me like this. So they, they started, you know, that guy cried. Ah, 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 ah. The thing came running. Eh? Ta, 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 ta. I was like, my God, look at the hands. My God. The thing came and I said, look at this. I was just like, man, this is my someone. This is my someone. A hen. What does the Bible say? Matthew 23, Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't listen to me. That is Jesus. He's likening you as like the hen. If that hen can do it, how about me? If a hen can protect the chicks, he said, I want to do it. I want to protect you. I want to guide you. I want to lead you. I want to speak to you. I want to empower you. I want to elevate you. But you just can't let me. You're my child. As the hen, as the hen protects her chicks. So can God protect you from cancer? God can't fail to protect you from that infirmity. Do I need a bodyguard? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, if we want to experience, listen to me, if we want to experience all that God has for us, 
we must have a revelation of the father's love listen to me if you ever want to experience god's best in your life you must have the revelation of the father's love for you to know that god loves me the revelation of the father's love now many of us will walk but without the revelation that you are loved by god have you seen this women who are confident that their husbands love them. I have seen a woman who is so I want, to, I want to find a woman who is who has experienced love to the extreme. Just sit with them. But again you find a woman who is frustrated in a relationship. Man, that woman will kill you. My God, my God. Ajakuta. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. If you find Sharon in one of those moments, Galimo, <laughs> oh, oh my God. But what am I trying to show you something? The revelation of the Father's love. Romans chapter 8 from verses 14 through 16 through 17, the Bible says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Wait a minute. They that are led by the... Wait a minute mean those that are not led by the spirit we have christians who are spiritual we have christians who are can oh 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 oh. they that are led by the spirit these are sons of god all what manner of love god has bestowed upon us that we might be called his children but are you led by the spirit or you are led by feelings or you are carnal you just watch any program. You just go anywhere. And you're saying you are a child of this grace. We take it for granted. By this scripture, by this scripture, I am born again. Okay, all right, you're born again. Is the Holy Spirit the control of your life? Yes, you're born again. Eh? You give your life to Jesus Christ. All right. Maybe you are a baby, you can understand it. All right? But okay. How long have you been saved? 17 years, 5 years, but still led by the flesh. You're a child of God. But this, is a, this one is a very important scripture. The Bible says God knows those who are His. But I'm born again. Wait a minute. Are you led by the Spirit? Because we are born of the what? Spirit. You can't be, you can't be born by the Spirit and you're led. You can't. Ha <laughs> ha. For you did not know, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba Father. Again, back to the relationship, okay? Abba Father. But you received the yeah, Abba Father. Then he says, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of what? God. I'm see, I'm first focusing on another part of children. The Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. So one of the primary manifestations of the Holy Spirit is to bear to your spirit that you are a child of God. Once that can come to your life, it will change the way you see God. Then he says, and if children, then heirs, eh? wait a minute, eh? heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I'm not going to fight with my brother or sister. What? I don't don't say because I'm a woman. But uh, I, I need to say something. I need to say something. Somebody can. Uh, uh, one of my, one of my, okay, one of us, one of us was we were fighting, and he said, "Let for, let daddy die. I'll kill you." <laughs> it, it was because of land. Let daddy die, and daddy was listening. Let daddy die, and do what? I'll kill you. But Busika, hallelujah. So if you grow up with this mindset, eh, man, for me, I am a joint heir with Christ. You take your land. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm taking nations. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. But the 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 Rome, the NLT version says of 16, God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. Listen, who we really are, who we really are, who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are. We know who God is, our Father. We know who we really are, His children. Now, I'm first working on our identity because if you don't get it, we're not going to experience the love of God. So, He's the Father, we are children. We know who He is, Father. 
We know who we are, our, who are children. Do you know who you are? Do you have this affirmation every day? Imagine, how do you wake up in your house and beg? <laughs> Daddy, I need some milk. I need such a baby, eh? Right? But many of us like that, eh? we are still babies in the spirit. You're asking. You're a baby. Let these, let these ones ask. But you have been born again and you're asking. You just don't know who you are. Just wake up in the morning, get your meal, but, but it doesn't mean that you empty the whole fridge. Anyway. So you've got to know who he is, the revelation of his person. Then you'll know who you truly are. Now listen to me. If you can get to know who God is, is if you have the right perception of who God is, you're going to see yourself or self you mean you're going to see yourself for who you are. You're going to see your true self. In seeing God, you see your true self. In seeing God, you see your true self. Hallelujah. No one who has seen God. For, for example, Isaiah says, Isaiah 6 verses 5. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone and ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. I have seen the king. He saw the king. Then he saw him. Yeah? You get it? Huh? After seeing God, he saw him for who he is. You remember Peter? Peter, in Luke chapter 5, verses 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. When you see God for who he is, you'll see yourself for who you truly are. But now listen to me. When you see him, have a revelation of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, for as he is, so are what? So are we in this world. That when you look and have a perfect revelation of the Christ, you will know that you are Christ also, because you are the visible representation of the invisible God. You cannot have a revelation of the Christ and think that you're poor. You cannot have the revelation of the Christ and think that you are sick. No. As he is, so are we. Do you understand who you are? Hallelujah. Because if you don't, if you don't understand who you are, you look at the prayer mountain. Makare bakota. You just don't know who you are. I'm building something. Jude chapter 1. Jude, Jude chapter 1, verses 1, the Bible says, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ the Messiah and brother of James, writes this letter to those who are called, chosen, dearly loved by God the Father. Listen to Jude. He says, I am writing to those who are dearly loved by God the Father. Hallelujah. When you go to read that Bible, you look, you, you read as one who is dearly loved by God the Father. Every time you go in the presence of God, you go as one who is dearly loved by God the Father. It changes the way you see things. Hallelujah. It changes the way you see things. Because Christianity is an experience. Christianity is an experience. You've got to experience the word of God. You've got to experience the word of God. You've got to experience the word of God. If you say, yes, I know God loves me, but have you experienced the love of God? Some of us don't know what I'm talking about. Because you've not practically experienced it. Okay, you, you talk about, I have peace with God, which we all have, right? Romans chapter 5. We all have peace with God, but have we experienced the peace of God? When the storm comes, when the storm comes, you go to sleep. Hallelujah. When the storm comes, you go to sleep. When the enemy attacks you in the night, it is you. Ha! <laughs> you go to sleep. Huh? Do not be anxious for anything. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request. Not that the person who is in what? Rest. We who have believed do enter that rest. But if you're not sleeping amidst the storm, then you've not experienced the peace of God. How can you be tested when there is a storm? So if you're a Christian and you've never been tested, you don't understand what I'm talking about. It's just a galawan. 
I am loved. I am more than a conqueror. Okay, you can be more than a conqueror. Okay, let me send witchcraft. Not God, eh? Satan. Can can syndicate you? Let me see. Let me see if he's more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus at the boat when the storm came, what was he doing? Sleeping. Hallelujah. He was what? Sleeping. Because he, he, of course, he is peace himself. But do experience that peace. I'm building something, by the way. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3 from verses 17, the Amplified Version, the Bible says, May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. Where does Christ dwell? In your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. Is Christ dwelling in your heart? Is Christ what? Dwelling in your because out of the abundance of the heart. Now you are gossiping. Is Christ dwelling in your heart? Yes, okay, we must. Okay. Okay. Then he says, May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. You must be founded securely on love. If it's a ministry, if it's a marriage, if it's a relationship, you must be founded securely on love that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. Now we show you that love is a what? Experience. Nagamba, what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves? Uh-huh. Practically through experience for yourself. You must experience the love of God for your what? For yourself. Nagamba, the love of Christ which first surpasses mere knowledge. That is without experience. We are heads and no tails. Somebody has it here, but without experience. God is good. Without what? Hey, your knowledge. <laughs> we are rich. Okay. How about the cloth of 110,000? Have you experienced it? Mashe Katala Brando Kazala. We are rich, all things are ours. Okay. Go and buy a coil. Have a coil. Have, have, have dinner coil in Rider Hotel. I keep saying those things by the Rider Hotel at 50, 60,000. But your budget for the meal, 2K. At most, 35. Eh? You've not experienced. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, is it knowledge without experience? Or is it knowledge with experience? What you're talking about, you have the fruit of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God Himself. That's the power of what? Of love. Hallelujah. Okay, I've painted a picture of 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 of, of the love of the Father. Because my title is what? I am what? I have a very important. Now, I want to say this, that God names us according to our assignments. Hallelujah. That God will name you according to divine purpose. God will name you according to the assignment that you have. So it is important you have the right name for your ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. But how can you name your son Bizibu Biansi Aisha? <laughs> So when they call the, the flesh one says yes, but the one also is and says, New Hando. Come call the call. Because busy will be You find a guy is married, busy. The guy's finances, busy. When he enters in a building, busy will be a day. Busy will be a day. Because it's called busy will be a day. I mean, we, we have names. We have names. We have. I mean, I'm telling you, by the way. Says <laughs> what? Bigan, Ronald. Bigan. 
very one called Bigani. The Munavam, the Munatambula, Bigani Ronald, no wonder Bigana. So it is important you name your children according to their assignment. One of us is going to name their children, uh, their child, what? Ahava. You think it's by, 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 you know, they are positioning the child. Hallelujah. As she had not grace. Glory to God. My spiritual father is Apostle Grace, so we have a spiritual, the next matriarch. She's going to preach the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. And they normally come in a very weird circumstances and from different backgrounds, but we bless the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> but by the what is what is your name? What's the meaning of your name? I should, I should, I should ask these guys. Hey, this is a single thing, a single thing. Hey, they don't know. It's a single thing. Hey? Number why? I do not know. If it is very good, I have, I have lost. Remember from today? Uh-huh. Adrian? Irabu. Because Irabu means what? Gift. I'm a gift to the world. Hallelujah. I'm a solution to the world. I am the answer the world needs. I am gifted. The world needs me. I don't know about you. You should put your name. <laughs> it's a big world. I am a gift to the world. Some people are like, I am a gift to the world. Hallelujah. If you have a problem with it, put your name. Okay? I'm the deepest man in the world. So somebody will say, but about your spiritual father? That is him. That is his world. I'm, I'm also in my what? You also put your name. Hallelujah. So, how did I come with the name Mahava? Because last time I shared in a small dimension, because we were like, you see, sometimes you talk to people when they're like, he said, but when I started receiving revelation, I'm like, ah, now I can share the real thing in Ahava. But how did I come with the name Ahava? I remember when I was just growing up, like in high school, they used to call me Muluku Aragui. And that thing used to eat me up a little bit. I used to hide in basketball. But deep down, I felt like I'm not loved. Deep down, I felt like this color of mine. Eh? <laughs> this color of mine. Mm. Hallelujah. So you, 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 you fear to be dark. Hallelujah. So I said, I am going to change my name to fight this thing. So instead of Adrian, I am going to add L-O-V-E. So I am Adrian. Love. Okay, so I call myself Adrian Love in the flesh, by the way, not in the spirit. But it was helping me that. Little you know, did I know that it was preparing me for my ministry. But there's a good work, sir. I think that it was preparing me for my ministry and the name for my ministry. Okay, so then I went to the, you know, you're curious and they're beginning to grow. You go to the, to the Bible and say, okay. What's the meaning? What's what's the name of love in Greek, in Hebrew? And then they bring Ahava. I'm like, aha, Ahava. But that's how it all started. Love. But I didn't understand the revelation of Ahava. Hallelujah. I didn't understand the, the revelation of what? Uh-huh. Of Ahava. But did I want to give us a revelation of that what? Ahava. But yes, it, because. Ahava could mean <laughs> sexual love. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the Hebrew word for the Hebrew verb for Ahava it is Ahav A H A V pronounced Ahava with 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 V at the end. Aha. Va. Because I can't, I, I can't write for you Hebrew. You want to read it? Eh? You want to read it? Eh? But that's how, that's how they pronounce it. Ahava. Okay, is the biblical Hebrew word meaning to love? A biblical, I mean a biblical Hebrew word meaning to love. I'm now coming. So Ahava means what? Biblically. Not physically. Bibli what? Biblically. And now it covers a broad spectrum of concepts of love. It's the whole thing about love. Hallelujah. When somebody is on fire, that's... Hallelujah. 
but it looks at Sarah like I'm her baby tonight. Hallelujah tonight. Sakataya, Sukataya, Sakata. Tonight. You you guys understand what I'm saying? Eh? Hey, that's a hava. Different concepts of what? Of love. <laughs> But this word is mentioned 45 times in the Old Testament. The biblical meaning of Ahava. 45 times in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it doubles. And very interestingly, the greatest and most interesting one is in 1 Corinthians chapter what? 13. The chapter of what? Of love. So, Ahava generally describes the love of a husband. To, now, very important. Listen to me. Listen, don't miss this. It describes the love of a husband towards his what? Wife. And God's love for his children. Those two. That's the main point. Describes the love of a husband towards his what? Love. Not Sharon towards planet. You get me? But planet towards what? Sharon. And God's love towards his children, not his children towards, get my point, Christ's love for the church. It describes that Genesis 29, 20, the Bible says, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love that he had for her. That was a hover. The love used there was what? A hover. So it's God's love. It is, it is man's love towards his wife. Am I making sense? But for God, it is called Elohim Ahava. That is his name. Elohim Ahava, the God who loves. Hallelujah. Some of us are fighting to love people. Don't fight to love people. Hallelujah. Amen. This lady is not supposed to love her gift. Yeah? Name is Bokamat. This lady is not supposed to love planet. That's not in their place. That's not in their place. Hallelujah. And you find husbands. No, of course they're not there to love you. Muslim Rogaravich. Hallelujah. You don't fight to love. You do everything. You do everything. And you get off your ways. Have you seen ladies who have gotten out of their way? To prove that they love their husbands, it doesn't work because you are fighting against divine order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is the man who's supposed to love. That's the order. So if your husband here, do not be angry because the lady doesn't love you. That's not that's not a position. That's never her position. Let us clap for me. Hallelujah. That's not their position. That's not their position. I do not care. Theirs is to submit. But again, they submit to the authority that loves them. So it's not it's 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 not them to work. And I feel so bad when it is the ladies who are doing everything to make things work. And I'm like, come on. This I have a thing. It describes the love of a man towards his wife and God towards his children. It's never the other way around. God doesn't want you to fight to love him. You don't come to God and say, let me first keep myself in order. I stop drinking. I stop, then I come to God. Ah, God says, come as you are. Because he knows the order is me. I'll, I'll love you and it will go. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be with husband and wife. That it's okay. With your, yes, you talk a lot. It's okay. Come, come, come. Come, 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 come. You understand? Hallelujah. Amen. Then you find men. And Elohim, Ahava, the God who loves. God doesn't measure you on how much you love him. God measures you on his love for you. Because he knows when you come to him, to know him is to love him. Because you can't help. You can't help fall in love with this God. When you experience the love of God, he knows when you experience the love of God, you would. Akumaz. 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 Just come as you are. Ahava is going to settle you out. Am I really making sense? Am I making sense? So, the essence of our being, listen to me, is to be loved by God. 
You exist to be loved by God. Somebody will clap for that one. You exist to be loved by God. You exist to be loved by God. Sharon is in her marriage, she's there. What's her number thing? To be loved by a planet. That is the first thing. Hallelujah. That's the what? That's the first thing. So we exist. When we say we are hover, we exist to be loved by God. The rest will come into play. Am I making sense? So a wife is to be loved by her what? A husband. So I am a hover. I am loved by God. That's the reality we are saying. We here are a hover because we are loved by God. And once we get that revelation, it's going to change the way we walk and the way we do ministry. We are loved by God. That is God's love for you. That's the first thing. You wake up in the morning knowing you are loved. Because you are a child. This world, what manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we might be called His children. That you might be called His what? Children. So I am a haver. I am loved by God. That's the first thing you should say to yourself. And when we look at you, we look at the love of God displayed in you. Hallelujah. Amen. That when you look at Sharon, I like him and that plant likes this lady. But now, you, you see that? That lady. Oh, bow. But that is what they should see. If they don't see. So, when we look at Sharon, we should see planets love being displayed. Glory to God. Okay? So, yes, I have read somewhere in the Bible where Ahava is mentioned in the Bible. Okay? Okay? In Ezra chapter 8 verses 15, I read that, we know that one, where the Bible says, Now I gathered them by the river that flows to where? To Ahava. Verse 21, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava. Verse 31, Then we departed from the river of Ahava. I'll come back there a little bit. So we find Ahava in the book of Ezra, but it's not depicting what God is because it was in Babylon. Hallelujah. It was in what? In Babylon. But let me just talk about this Elohim, the God who loves. Where, I want to share with us some scriptures where the word Ahava was used, right? Because we must understand. By the way, let me tell you something. When, when, when reading the scriptures, we must understand that they might use God delights in people. Somebody can say it in Psalms and it's very different from Romans. Hallelujah. It could be very different from Romans. So we must learn to study the word of God. Hallelujah. So I want to share with us incidences about four scriptures where this word Ahava was used. Where this love was used. Love by God. Okay, Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, But because the Lord loved you, because the Lord loved you, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Wait a minute. He would keep the oath. But we see somewhere in Hebrews where he says, God says, I swear. The Bible says, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will what? Multipl and God swore and said, I'm just using that one. Njaku blessing. You understand what I'm saying? So he made an oath which is so unto our fathers hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. That's the, the world in our spiritual life here. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Because the Lord loves you, therefore know. Don't miss that part. Because the Lord loves you, you better now know. Because you cannot know without the revelation of what? His love. But the word love there in Hebrew is ahaba, which is love. A what? Ahaba. So because the Lord loves you, know, know therefore. Hallelujah. So here's what I do. Father, because you love me, I know therefore that I am a head and not a tail. 
I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what I said to myself. Because I know. Because I know. Because you love me. Therefore, I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that I am safe. I know that though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord God will take me into his care. I know it. I know it. So if you... Now you can understand why we can say things and we say, I am a head and not a tail. But you have no revelation. Why? Because you don't have the revelation that God must say. Because somebody can say, I am a head and not a tail. I am blessed with every situation. Then you inside like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Why? Because you do not know that God loves you. So when you have the revelation that God loves you, you will know. Glory to God. You will know. Because God loves me. Because God loves me. I know that I can't fail. Am I making sense? So, are you really convinced? Are you really persuaded that you can't fail? Are you really persuaded that you're going to make it in life? Do you really have the assurance that you will finish well? Because if you don't really have it, then you don't understand God's love. You've not apprehended and received the love of God in full. Hallelujah. That is why in marriage, in marriage, um, when a woman, when a wife is loved, okay, she's secure. She can't ask questions. Okay? Mommy, I told you what. They don't. If they are sure, they are loved. No come out midnight. No come out 3 a.m. If they are sure. But if they are not sure, they begin asking questions. Hallelujah. They begin questioning your authority. Hallelujah. Everything we do, they begin to question. Once they begin questioning, yes, no, that banana. What is disturbing them is security. They are doubting you. Hallelujah. But that is a free one for any for, for, for men here and who listen to this audio. Hallelujah. Free. When the woman starts asking questions, things are getting wrong. Things but the things are getting wrong. Karika love for Kakenda. 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 Hallelujah. Because now they no longer feel their love. Now they don't know. They don't know if you're out there with someone. They don't know. They, 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 want to, they don't know. But because they are loved, they will know they are safe. But if they don't know that they are loved, they won't know that they are safe. So let me ask questions because I want clarity. Hallelujah. Amen. That is not what I'm talking about. That is not what I'm talking about. Glory to God. Amen. So, you can't know without the revelation of his love. All I'm trying to say, once you know that you're a child of God, once you have the revelation of who you are, once you've experienced the love of God, you will know that you can't fail in this life. You will know that you will make it. You will know that you can face any devil because greater is he which is in you than the devil that is in the world. You know that you will get a job. You will know that you will make it. Come on. When you know that you... When, when you experience the love of God. Glory to God. First Kings chapter 10 verses 9. The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he, made he thee king to do judgment and justice. He loved Israel forever. But I like the fact where he says that, which delighted in thee, that God delighted in Israel and then loved Israel. Hallelujah. I just delighted in Solomon. Have you found some guys who just find and say, no, 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 I like that guy. I just like that guy. Hallelujah. What's your name? And they just give you everything. Because some of you even walk, <laughs> you walk in an office and they just like you. Somebody delighted in you. Oh, oh. So if somebody, now imagine, I'll give an example for us to understand. Imagine you walk and somebody likes you. I just, Sajia Kunkaga, what's his name? You can't you. Hallelujah. That's what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. It's what I'm trying to say, but you know, you have a better one than seven. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we say, delighted in thee. The Bible says, the Hebrew word therefore delight is kafetes. That is to be pleased with. 
that God was pleased with Israel and then loved Israel forever. He just, there is nothing that Israel did. They were stiff necked people. They failed him, but he was pleased with them. Eh? Hallelujah. These guys were not perfect. They annoyed him, but he was what? Pleased. So his love for you is unconditional. I am pleased with you. You get the point. Eh? The Bible says in Psalms 18, 19, He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Eh, eh. That God delivers you because he just delights in you. That God provides for you because he just delights in you. That God protects you because he just, de- just, he just likes you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So how can I fail? This is what I'm saying. Once I understand that I'm a child of God, eh? I will know that God delights in me. Are you ever for yeah? Delights in me. When a woman is cooking food and, and they burn that water. <laughs> Hallelujah. They burn the what? Yeah, because they delight in their, their husband delights in them. They'll be like, Bananga, baby, Bananga, I'm sorry. But you find a woman who is not loved by the husband. <laughs> Chibo. Chibo. Bananga, this is so bananga. This is. And, 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 I'm, and I'm looking at the man, and I'm like, look at the man. And I met the men there, be like, Nchikubi. Nchikubi. How can a woman who has burnt food start fearing you? Now, I'm not saying they should burn burnt food. How can a woman who has made mistakes start fearing you in the house? <laughs> eh? That means that husband doesn't delight in you. Am I making sense? Well, we, men, we should delight in our hearts, in, in our wives. Yes, they make their mistakes. But who are you? Even Israel made mistakes. But God delighted in what? In them. Now, once you understand that even when you've woken up in this morning and you've not prayed, God still delights in you. Amen? Now, Pastor Adrian, hey, <laughs> Kati, yeah. Because although I don't read it, God still did. and then you come in the morning and confess. That was up here. In God was me, you believe like Papa delights in me. Ah. Ah, is this a question? Because you've not understood the grace, and you're talking the grace of God in vain. But I'm just saying, even when you have failed, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, clap for that one. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you did this morning. I don't care what you did yesterday. God delights in you anyway. And his love for you doesn't increase or decrease. It's the same. I delight in you. Now, once you know that, once you know that, the world is yours. Once you know that, the world is yours. So even we, as husbands, we delight. Has she part the food? Come on, baby. CJ, I'll order for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow she burns the food as a baby cow. You possibly do. Hallelujah. We also need wisdom. Eh? We also need wisdom. Hallelujah. But the message version of First Kings 10 19 says, And blessed be God your God, who took such a liking to you. Who took such a liking to you and made you king? Clearly, God's love for Israel is behind this. Eh? My God. That every time God protects you, clearly it's the love of God behind it. Every success you, 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 you see in your life, every stepping stone in your life, it is clearly God's love behind it. Everything that you've accomplished, it is clearly God's love behind it. Amazing. Hallelujah. That's why we need to understand this love of God. Everything you've accomplished this year, somebody got a job, I mean, an elevation. But really, it was clearly God's love behind it. Amen. But they're also faithful. Eh? Hallelujah. Because I, I need to balance the equation. Let me sleep. God's love is behind me. Ah, you'll sleep until tomorrow. Nothing will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they came back to our men. Because by this is for men. Eh? Every they say that it's my <laughs> what was in the scriptures? I, I, I don't like it. Eh? It's not scripture. Behind every successful man there's a what? Hmm? Successful. There's a what? Successful. Well, it's in, in the Bible, right? <laughs> Man-made. Yeah, oh, it's just wisdom. Man made it. Eh? Hey. 
Hallelujah. Can I forgive my? Hallelujah. Behind every successful woman. <laughs> Behind every successful what? Is what? Ah, ah. Oh, His husband's love for her. His husband's love for her. The Bible says clearly God's love for planet's love for Sharon is behind this. When she's shining, whose love is behind? Amen. When she puts on that hair, Mare Kata, who's whose love is behind? Hallelujah. Amen. They clap for me. <laughs> By the way, that is the essence in marriage. That behind everything we see in a woman, every, I mean, everything that we see in a woman, what is behind them is the husband's love. Just love your wife. Just love your wife. Full, by the way, not 40%. 100, you will see what I'm talking about. There are things that you're going to put, they move on. <laughs> anyway, that's for another day. Isaiah 63 verses 9, the Bible says, In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. Are you seeing that? That is still Ahava. By the way, this scripture is, uh, the word there is what? Ahava. Okay? You can say, in Ahava he redeemed what? Them. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, the Bible says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Ye, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting kind, with, with, with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Say, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I'm not loving you for only one week. You, you're not praying. You're not winning souls. No, I have loved you with an everlasting love. It is, it is forever, irrespective. Hallelujah. Amen. So you, if you know that God has loved you and you take his love for granted, it's up to you. You'll enter heaven very broke. You'll enter, what? But some are going to enter heaven very what? So it's up to you. You pick. Hallelujah. But for me, I have loved you. If you don't want to pray, it is okay. That is God, by the way. I still love you. But you're going to miss out the revelation that you have changed your life. That's a problem. That's a difference with those who have gone ahead. What? The revelation of God's love and that hits their spirits. But then it says, I have drawn thee. Now that I have called you out. You are the called out ones. Hosea 14.4 The Bible says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger has turned away from him. In other words, all that God loves, Ahava, loves Freely, that God loves you freely. It's not a legalistic relationship. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Ah, uh, uh. whether you don't do, just believe in me. I love you freely. It's the same with a husband, with what? His wife. We just, you just love your wife. Pastor, I'm going to you. Pastor, don't beg me. Ah, you love her, what? Okay, we again. Not a motor. Anyway, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So I've shown you the scriptures, for example, that depict this name. Now, do you know why I was I picked this name, not knowing that it was preparing me for my ministry? It was preparing me for my ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Because love is the foundation and the summation of the gospel. Love is the foundation of the gospel. Love is the, if I want to summarize the gospel, okay? If I want to summarize the gospel, John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's, that's the foundation of the gospel. That's the summary of the gospel. God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave. Because love gives. Am I making sense? Love what? Yes. Gifts. Now you find those who are attached to, to their other things. Eh? You bought a chiffon of two million. You can't give it away. You have your cheek cloth of 50k. <laughs> so when you hold it, or Jambala wants say, yeah. Then somebody says, I want, then God says, give it away. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. By the way, let me tell you something. Just because you guys don't want to practice the presence of God, eh? when you practice, I say, okay, you know, first give away that thing. <laughs> Tell him, come 
But if you cannot give those things, then you see that catch the things of the what? Of the world. That's why even here this for God so loved the world. Even see the principle of first fruits. He gave his first. He gave his first son. First fruit. Now, some of us can't even give our first fruits. Hallelujah. We can't. Hallelujah. So we gotta, uh, it's okay. We can't give our what? First <laughs> You've not understood the love of God. Why am I making sense? So John 3.16. For God so loved the world. First John 3.16. The Bible says, by this we know love. How do I know love? Because let's start by, because I'm talking about revelation of the love. How do we know love? The Bible says, by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So how do you know that God loves you? A cross. You may live younger, you may not experience the love of God. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to know that God loves you, he laid down his life for you. That's enough. You walk this place and leave this place knowing that I know, I know that God loves me. Why? Because he laid down his life for me. So the cross defines the love of God. Am I making sense? So I don't care if you're fighting with the revelation, later. But for now, get that revelation. I know that God loves me. And that's enough. Then you start understanding the power of the cross. Then you start understanding what the cross means. Then you start experiencing the love of God. Am I really making sense? Yeah. As a variance, then love becomes the foundation of our character. Yeah. As a variance, as I have, listen to me, love from today becomes the foundation of our character. Turn and say that we are Love is the foundation of our character as a ministry. Mm-hmm. As a ministry. But it starts by knowing that we are loved. Because you can't give what you don't have. If you can know that you are loved, you will give it away. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Then I'll tell you something. People who are beating their wives or doing this because they're not they don't know how they do. There's no one who there's no one who has received the love of Christ. I no. I don't get it. Hallelujah. No, 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 there's no judge. If you've understood the love of God and have experienced the love of God, you'll not be joy. You'll not hate your wife. That's why I feel sorry for the ladies. I'm looking for a man who loves me, who has six packs. He cares about me. He cares about even me. I care about you. Don't, 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 don't take care about you, sorry. I do. But you love me the other way. Why? Hallelujah. I can also care about her. I care about this lady, but why is it she with me? Masakata. <laughs> I care about Deborah. But why is it it is Julius? I care about Susan. But why is it it is Joseph? Hallelujah. Sakata. Hallelujah. So as a variance, love is the foundation of our character. I asked us last time, who is an variance? But no one came here. Remember that time? I asked us who is what? Malenche Kinga. So I've learned with maturity that there are certain things you don't say, you keep when the right when the time is what? Apostle Grace told me that. He taught me that but don't just say things. Some 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 testimonies that you have made, like I, I have some testimony yesterday. But you don't say it. Maturity you say requires say it at the right time. So love is the foundation of our as a ministry. As a ministry. Glory to God. Second Corinthians 5.14, the Bible says, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, if one died for all, then all died. For the love of what? Christ compels us. That's our foundation. In other words, we are ruled by Christ's love for us. That is what rules me. The love of Christ for me. That is what rules me. That is what rules me. The love of Christ for me. The love of Christ con- controls me. It adds me and impels me. Am I really making sense? So I am a hover. I am ruled by Christ's love for me. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Let love rule you. Not feelings. Not anger. Did you see what she did to me? Ah, it's okay. Let the love of Christ what? Rule you. Yes, once in a while we can get angry, but let the love of Christ what? Rule you. His love has the first and last word in everything we do. His word, his I mean his love has to be the first and the last word in everything that what we do. Our firm decision is to work out from that center, loved by God. Because the Hava means loved by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want to go to a Two scriptures before I finish. Romans chapter 5 verses 5. We have read it. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Listen. Hope does not disappoint because the love I have has been poured out into our hearts, our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now going back to Ezra, the river that flows to Ahava, you remember? Yeah. Now it's no longer the river that flows to Ahava. It's the Ahava from where the river flows from. It's no longer the river that flows to Ahava. Because I'm now Ahava, right? Yes. The river of love was the river was flowing to love. But now I am Ahava love from which the river flows from to people and touching people because I am a Hava, the river of love. How do you call River Muluganda? Yeah? River Muluganda. Omuga. Oh, Hallelujah. You are Muga. Omuga. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. So I am the river. It's not like the river that flows to a Hava. Jesus said, remember? The, the river, come to me and drink. You, you, you remember? Out of this shall flow rivers of living. And that was the Holy Spirit that out of you flows. No wonder Romans 5.5 5 says, and I'll pour. The love of God has been poured into your heart by the word. Holy Spirit. In your hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are a hover from where the river of love flows to people. Hallelujah. That's why we are a hover ministry. Amen. Out of us flows what? Love. Glory to God. Amen. So, hope does not disappoint because the love. Hope does not disappoint because I'm a hover. Hallelujah. My confidence and trust in God cannot disappoint me. I can't. My trust in God cannot disappoint me because of a hava. Hallelujah. Amen. And I read there in, in our period of life what ashamed means, right? To put to utter confusion and frustration, right? So, in other words, your trust in God cannot be frustrated. It can't be confused. Why? Because you are a hava. The love of God has been poured into your spirits. Am I really making sense? Yeah. So the river that flows to heaven, the river in, 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 in Ezra, that was you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are the river. The have a hover through which this river flows from. That's what I'm saying. A hover, I am the river of love. Hallelujah. Now you can't be you can't be a river of love and fail to love your husband or your wife or the church or your neighbor. You can't be the river of love and you're gossiping and fighting with people. You can't be. If you're really a hover, you can't be. You can't be a hover and you're gossiping about people. You can't be a hover and you are feeling you, you're not believing in people. Do I believe in Sharon? Because what is love? Love is kind. I am a half, I am kind. Eh, 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 now they're getting it. Eh, 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 eh. What is love? <laughs> I am a half, I believe all things. What is a half? I am a half, I hope all things. Then you find a half. No, you are a half, you hope all things. Love is patient, love is fun. Listen, you are a half, you don't keep records of wrong. Eh, eh. <laughs> eh, eh. First Corinthians chapter. That, that, that's what I'm finishing, right? God is, I mean, love is, right? 
Love. I mean, love is patient. I am a hover. I am patient. I am patient with my husband. I am patient with my papa. I am patient, but I am also patient with the flow. Keep me I'm patient with you people. Because I am a hub. Oh, you know. Huh? You know. <laughs> when you say love keeps record of much. But listen to me. Love believes. Even when I don't see the ten, I still believe. Because I am a hub. Love hopes all things. Even when things are tight, I see what? I was sitting here. Singing our song here, but in my mind I was closing and I was singing the world. I still hope. Because that is me. That's me. I am love. Love hopes. Love keeps record of no wrongs. So I am a hub from which that love flows. Because it was poured into my heart. Imagine God poured kindness into you. Imagine God poured that that hopes in all things into you. Imagine God poured that which believes. Eh? God said, ah, nah. Love believes all things. Uh-huh. Say now, love keeps record of no wrongs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say now, love what? Love what? The, love is patient. <laughs> so when Pilate is walking, what do you see? Patience. You say, believe in all things. That is a hub. So when he was pouring, and I want you to know, I want to finish with this one. The last one of, of, of love. Love never fails. A hover never fails. We are not of a people that fail. Our ministry will not be a ministry that will fail. Amen. Yeah. And you've always heard me talking about that one. The word of God will never fail. But really, I know who I was speaking to. I'm speaking to myself. Because I am love. Mm-hmm. I am love. Mm-hmm. Don't fail. God said, look, God looked and said, love never fails. Come, come, come. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, where are you? Holy Spirit, where are you? Mm-hmm. And he poured that which never Face. And God was saying, you know what? Your marriage will never fail. Your business will never fail. Hey! Mm-hmm. Your dreams will never, your children can never what? Fail. So he poured everything there. Mm-hmm. Marriage will never fail. Mm-hmm. Because what is he powered it in you? How can your marriage fail? Mm-hmm. I just don't get it. Yes, it seems like it's not working, but it is working. Let God be true and every man a liar. Love never fails. Romans 5, 5. And he, because he powered his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Because to fail means love has failed. Hallelujah. Amen. And if God is love, eh? Wait a minute. If God, eh? Let us say we are God in the flesh. God is what? And if God is love, God never fails. How can I fail? Because to me, to fail means the God that has been poured in me, Christ in me, fails. Now do we get it? God was literally pouring now. I have to bring you this. God was literally pouring himself in you. <laughs> God was pouring himself into you and said, you can't fail. This is the affirmation. That's why I said, once you understand the revelation of his love and that he has been poured into you, it is God who has been poured into you and you can't fail. Amen. How can you fail? And I told guys, how can you fail? Because it means God has Failed. Romans 5.5 5. Hope does not disappoint Because the love of God God is love God never fails Has been poured into your spirit Now you know that I can't disappoint mm. Why? Because God can't fail So he was pouring in your children Giving you children hey, Your children will never fail mm. However your child will never fail Sharon will never fail Uganda will never fail. That's what I'm trying to say. Romans 8, 37, the Bible says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us. Wait a minute. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. What? Through him who is love Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So you can't fail because he loved you. That's what I'm trying to say. Hope can't disappoint because the love of God has been poured into your spirit. Isaiah 49, 14, the Bible says, but Zion, that is you, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me because I'm someone who has forsaken me. And we can blame God for nothing, even Satan for nothing. God has forsaken me. God has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Some of us think that way. Because you've been in this situation. Nah, huh? Then he says, Can a woman forget her nursing child? You've carried that child. Can Jen forget that nursing child? Can Jen forget? Unless she. He can't. But he says, okay, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Now, remember, surely they may forget. Yeah, surely. They might. See, that is God. He, he didn't say they will forget. Oh, they forget. He said, they may forget. But he says, yet I will not forget you. I will not forget you. I will not forget you. So I will not care whatever is happening. What is saying? I will not forget you. My, your hope in me will not disappoint. You will. I will not forget you. I will be with you back last. Why? Because I love you. Love never fails. Because for me to forget you, it means love has failed. And that is not me. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Then he says in verse 14, 16, See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. That your God is a temple and hood like this. Then my palms, right? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. How can you fail? Mm-hmm. Now, this is the testimony that I bear. This is, ladies and gentlemen, I have a, I am loved by God and I can't fail. Just take a moment to get it Say something, say something, say something, say something, say something, say something. You have about three minutes.